Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We're the Garso Twins. I'm Britta. I'm Carly. We would love it if you would subscribe down below and hit the bell so you're notified of when we upload. We have a fun video today, so you guys seem to really love our cream bronzer showdown we did, and some of you recommended doing the same for blush, so we decided to do that today, and we're really excited. We use a lot of, almost like more cream blush than cream bronzer, mm -hmm. so we have a lot to talk about. Let's get into it. Okay, so I have more than Britta. I use more cream blush mm -hmm. than she does. A lot of mine are very cute. This one isn't very used, but it's my number seven pick. Um, it is the, what is the brand? It's Cake. Half Caked is the brand, and this was $8 on Amazon. It was a Gabrielle, I think her last name is Alvarez. Alvarez. Mm -hmm. um, she's a makeup artist on Instagram, and I love her little, like, um, she just does, like, get ready's, like, every day, I think. Yeah. And she uses this all the time, and she has really similar undertones to us, and this is, okay, I'll get into it, but it's the Half Caked Your um, Cheek and Lip Tint in Your So Last Summer. And this specific shade is the one she was raving about, and I ordered it immediately based on this shade alone because... I will get into this, but every single cream blush pulls so pink on me, which is fine. Like, I love cream blush, so I'll deal. But can more brands make, like, neutral to cool toned cream blushes? Because I feel like they are non-existent. They all have, like, very strong red or orange, um, or even, like, the ones that are more, like, peachy, like the yellow, just makes them look warmer on me, at least. And this one is like a neutral brown with a little bit of pink. So that's like my dream blush shade. So I got it based on this. I can like swatch it. Um, and it's a really natural formula, like clean. So I thought like $8, like that's amazing. So the reason this is number seven, like I love the shade. Um, I think the shade is like, like I said, my perfect yeah, the shade is really blush pretty. shade. But the texture of this, like she raved about it and it looked really beautiful on her cheeks. But for me, it's just a tad like stickier and dewier than what I really look for. If you can see, it leaves like a really dewy finish. Kind of like the M Cosmetics Serum blushes. Like those blushes that just make your cheeks look wet. Which I've realized I don't really love. So that's probably the number one reason I don't reach for this more. And then like I said, it is a little bit tacky. Like it doesn't totally dry down. But for $8 and the color, like I'm glad I picked it up. Um, and I wanted to mention it as like one of an affordable option because we only have, well, we have a few others. Yeah, like two others. affordable options. But um, I just thought this was like really accessible on Amazon in a really unique shade. So I wanted to mention it, but I do wish yeah. it dried down. I didn't even bring it out here because I don't use it. Carly, I bought it for Carly's recommendation yeah. and I love the color, but I do not like the formula. So maybe mm -hmm. we should go over like our ideal cream blushes. Mine mm -hmm. is definitely... A matte finish like something that dries down and doesn't maybe it has like a satin glow but not it doesn't really look super glossy on the skin like I definitely like blushes that last because I love blush I like like a really like pigmented cheek so I feel like I want something that is going to dry down and I feel like you kind of like a little bit more dewier yeah I like a cream blush number one in a pan like a yeah. hot pour. I don't really like sticks because I never apply them anyways, like directly in my face. Yeah, so I prefer I, pans. Yeah, too. I find it harder um, to apply with my brush in a stick. So a pan or like a hot pour. And then I like it, yeah, to be like a satin matte finish. So like maybe a little bit of a sheen. Um, but basically, like I like a skin like finish. I like it to be really thin. And I like it to be buildable. I don't like it to be like so pigmented that it's really hard to work backwards. And yeah, that's what I look yeah, for. Yeah, buildable for sure. And we'll insert swatches of each of these um, like closer up. We'll swatch mm -hmm. them on our wrist and blend them out so you can kind of see how they blend um, more so for the formula reference, less for the shade. Because obviously all of these have multiple shades and we don't own them all. Yeah, but um, we'll be swatching. Like I like to swatch on my hand while we're talking too. Just yeah, to yeah, like yeah. ignite, you know, things I want to say about each blush formula. Yeah. So next up, this is my number five pick, and I guess Carly's number six. Yes. It's the Patrick Ta, what are these called? Well, they're the blush duos. Yeah, the blush duos. Um, we have the She's So LA, and they look like this. So yeah. it's cream on one side, powder on the other. So we're just gonna talk about the cream. But I do prefer the powder Me too. in this formula. I love the powder formula. So this, like this shade is really, really pretty. Again, like a brownie nude, kind of similar to that one, but a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's some shimmer in this one, right? Like some pearl? Is there? I think so. Well, I I like this formula, but again, I think it's 
a little bit too creamy for my preference like it definitely doesn't dry down to like a complete matte finish and I feel like kind of as you blend it in it kind of gets more sheer and more sheer. You know yeah, I, mean? I agree. So then you have to add more. Yeah. And then because, I don't know if you can tell, it's definitely not as dewy and tacky as the candy paint one. Yeah. But it, it does have a sheen. So once you start to like blend it out, it blends out to be pretty sheer and then yeah. you have to add more to build it up and then because Which it I think already has a sheen it's getting like more glossy on yeah. your skin and we should mention that the, I believe the way that Patrick applies these is he does the powder and then the cream on top mm -hmm. I want to say I know that I believe that's how he does the blush the sh shade and sculpt duo too um, so I kind of understand that concept yeah. because the blush is pretty pigmented so if you're already laying down a pigmented powder blush and you just maybe want to add like a little bit of dew and like like glow on top that's in the same realm of tone I feel like I actually really like that concept especially from like a makeup artist perspective mm -hmm. which he is but just the the cream on its own is not my favorite but all the colors are really really pretty yeah well and, and unique. this one yeah like we love like we said like a brownie blush and it's so hard to find in cream so I love that they did that in this yeah so overall I would still recommend this compact because mm -hmm. I really actually love the powder Me blush too. Um, and if you like the type of like layering technique that this provides I think it's a really good product it's just like we still include it in the video because we still recommend it and like it I just don't like it as much as all the rest of them mm -hmm. okay from here on out we're like pretty aligned on our choices my top two are just like ahead of all I guess maybe collection. I'm actually gonna move this one up so this okay. is my number four okay and this is my number one two three four five okay so it is the elf putty blush and this one gets points for being so affordable is it five or six dollars i think it's six and i also love and the jar the yes mm -hmm. love the jar and the shade why don't they write it on it's here? on the side it's called ba bali right yes it's called bali oh yeah this weird label here yeah um i love that these this is in a jar yeah it's so yes. easy it's like a great size and yeah, you really don't need more products use. than this yeah and these are so unique. I'm gonna show you the brush I use to apply all my cream blushes because it's also from e.l.f. It's the e.l.f., what is it called? It's something stipple brush. It's like $8 or $10 on Target. I will link it down below. And I just like go in and then dab on. And I use the <clears throat> ColourPop F9. It's a small stipple brush. And I usually will like dip it into the pan Kind of like rub it on the back of my hand yeah. and then do it's small pigmented. circles because this one is pretty pigmented. Yeah, that's this true. is the shade Bali that Carly said. It's like a gorgeous, rich terracotta. Actually, yeah. okay, maybe this is tied with my other one for number three, but this formula is so good. It dries down to like a powdery finish, not immediately. Like you have time to blend and work with it, but then it dries down, and I feel like it really lasts on the skin pretty well, especially because I feel like this is the only shade we have, mm -hmm. but I feel like all the shades are pretty bold. I yeah. Say so. I feel like they did that on purpose so that like you know it would last on the skin and like this type of cream formula I think that's part of my problem with a lot of cream blushes especially at the drugstore I feel like I this is the only one I tried that I like yeah because I feel like they kind of play it safe or there was like weird like soft pinks but I kind of like in a cream blush a little bit more of a bold color choice yeah so as you can see I love this color but like once it's on me it turns so orange which is fine yeah, I love but I orange. Like an orange blush yeah but I'm just saying like can you guys please recommend cool tone or neutral blushes that yeah, actually are neutral because I'm dying for them. Um, but this, I actually think, I actually think it dries down pretty quickly, but it is like such a like soft matte finish that it's really yeah. easy to blend. Um, and it actually, for being so matte, like there's like, I mean, it like dries down. Yeah. Um, for being so matte, it actually is so thin on the skin. Like mm -hmm. I said, being a thin formula is one of the things I really look for. And because it's so thin, it kind of looks like a matte watercolor once yes. it's on your face, mm -hmm. which like is what I really love in a blush. Which is actually really similar to my next one. But we'll yeah. The only reason this one isn't higher up for me is because I think it's a little too matte. But that's my only call out. And as far as like an affordable option, this one just takes the cake. Yeah. It's the best. It's so inexpensive. I know everyone talks about them, but they do live up to the head. If you guys have any other shade recommendations in this range, because I do think it's kind of hard to tell. Like, you know, drugstore, when you're shopping in store, you can't really see. Um, At least you can. Only in the back. Mm -hmm. But I feel like yeah, you can't tell what it's going to look like on the skin. Well, yeah. So, and I don't, you know, no one's watching in store anyway these days. So if you have any recommendations, we're definitely open to them. My next one that Carly didn't include here is the Jason Wu, um, what are these called? Like hot fluff lip lipsticks. 
and they're for eyes lips and cheeks and i love them as lipsticks i wore this in a video maybe last week this is the shade biscotti which is my favorite one and i love using this as a blush i've been using it lately as a blush so how i apply it is it's pretty pigmented because it's a lipstick <laughs> well i mean i they it looks like a lipstick but they market it as a multi-use product and i think it is we did a full review on these, mm -hmm. so we will link that down below. Um, but I just take my brush, like put some on the back of my hand, take my brush, and basically dab it, and then like, you know, kind of blend it onto the cheeks. And this is really, really similar, let me see if I can like blend it out, to the e.l.f. in that it has like that like powdery matte dry down. So I find them to be very, very similar. This one is a little less pigmented, the e.l.f. Well, like I said though, that like bold color choice, whereas this is a neutral, so that could be why too. But when I just want like a very soft like kiss of nude on my cheeks, this is the blush that I go for if I'm using like a cream that day. It just looks really, really natural on the face and it dries down matte and it lasts for a pretty long time. Again, like not very pigmented, not very bold. So it is more of like a subtle hint of color, but some days that's just what I'm looking for and I really like the way that this dries down on the skin so I wanted to mention that because I feel like when people think cream blush they don't think of this product but I think it works really really well as a blush number four and this is my number two okay and it is the merit what are these called the flush bomb flush bombs it's a cream blush in the cutest little packaging mm -hmm. my two favorite shades are terracotta and cheeky I actually terracotta was like my first love that I was like oh yeah. wow because again once again, um, it's really hard to find these sort of like brown neutral shades and this one even gets a little warm on me mm -hmm. in a cream blush. So I grabbed her towards that, but then I tried cheeky ones and I was just like, wait, this is like my favorite and it's probably the one I've been wearing the most lately because it's like summertime and that's this sort of like magenta shade, which I love. But. Yeah, and I actually, this is a blush range that I like all the shades. Yeah, me too. Beverly Hills is probably my least favorite because it's the most pink but I like all the shades, but I saw Alana talking about Mood, and I forgot how beautiful this is. It's the deepest one, but it looks so beautiful blended out on the skin. It's like a deep wine color, and so this is probably the one I've been wearing most often. But yeah, Terracotta was my first love, and I mm -hmm. still feel like that one's probably the most wearable, but I, like I said, I kind of like a more bold choice when you're using a cream blush, because you can really sheer it out if you want, especially this formula. I mean, I you could talk about the formula, mm -hmm. but I feel like you can really sheer this one out um, to be pretty much like just a very, very light touch of color, um, but you can kind of build it up to be a little more like impactful. Um, but this one isn't like the past two we talked about. It is more of a creamy consistency and it doesn't really dry down to like that matte finish. Yeah, this I would say is like the dewiest I will go me too. for me to like really like it. Yeah. But you have to be okay with your cheeks looking dewy wearing this product. Mm -hmm. Like there is no dry down. The playtime is endless. Like you can keep like look at I'm like well, I'm sure it's not hand. endless. I mean I put this on my hand a while ago and you can like keep moving it around. It's not like it like dries down, but it does last on the face. Yeah. I don't it really does. know how that works, mm -hmm. but it lasts like nearly all day even though it stays dewy. Um and but it doesn't feel heavy. I feel like mm -hmm. a, like that last one you talked about the candy paint and the Patrick Tot. Like we said, like you when you try to build them up, they kind of feel a little bit heavier yeah. on the skin. This well, one feels light. I that's because like Britta like, referenced this as creamy. I wouldn't call it creamy because I associate creamy with like a thicker, sort of heavier feeling. I actually feel like these feel almost like gel like. I guess when I'm saying creamy, I mean highly blendable. That's what I mean. Yeah, like they're super blendable. Um, but I mean, they're not gel like, almost like a skincare product. Like it feels mm -hmm. like, it feels like slippy and thin. Like again, thin, thin. which I love. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, that's like what I really love about it. I think that if this was like thick and this dewy, I would be like, well, I'm never going to wear that. Yeah. But because it's dewy but thin and like has that like beautiful blendability and the colors are so pretty, I really like this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the packaging is really cute, especially because like we said, mm -hmm. we never apply directly to the face. Yeah. So I like that I can just dip my brush in here. But you could easily apply directly to the face. Yep. Yeah, this combo is actually like my favorite. Yeah. I, like this is my brush I use for all of these, but like I do this so often during the work week, like I'll just go into Cheeky and like dab it in here and it's 
sheer enough that I don't even have to dab it on my hand and I just yeah. put it in and it looks great and it's like quick and it's easy. It's pretty effortless to use. Yeah. I have all of them. My number one pick is Carly's number three just because I haven't tried her one and two because like she said she wears more cream products. At least, well maybe we wear about the same cream bronzer but cream blushes than I do. Um, so my favorite blush, cream blush formula is the Ilia Multi Stick. And I wear, I mean this is so gross, I like should have wiped it off. It's so dirty because I wear it so often. But this is the shade At Last, which is like a beautiful, beautiful, mauve pink color, cool tone. Really, really wearable for every day. And the reason I like this formula the most is because whilst on the thick side, which I know we just said we like thin formulas, I feel like once this is blended out, it gives me the perfect amount of pigmentation for my preference. I like, like I said, I like when you can tell there's blush on the face. I love a good blushy cheek, and I feel like this still like holds all that pigment that I want, but then the dry down is almost like a satin finish. So I feel like it dries down, it like still lasts on my skin, but it looks like blush on my face. And I feel like this is just, I don't know, it's like everything I'm looking for in a cream blush. Like you can probably tell it's pretty pigmented. Yeah, I had the shade Lady Word, which I purchased. I like thought about it for after we tried, which one? Maybe that one? Yeah, Dreamer I have in the old packaging, which yeah. is... And I just really like the formula, and I was like, I'm going to get Lady Bird, which is actually super similar to Dreamer. I'm kind of confused on why they released both, because they look so, like, Well, and there's that it. shade it that, like, Sienna, so similar. that Sienna shade that I really Which is wanted. the burnt orange, I know. Yeah. Yeah, Ilya's really good at shades. But, yeah, I will oh, say this, so I would describe as creamy. This is, like, a yeah. thicker, creamy texture that also has a lot of playtime. Um, but because it's, like, that thicker texture, it's not as, like, sp like, spreadable as the um, yes. Merit blushes. Mm -hmm. So I do find that you really do have to like work these in. You like, do. Like really, you know, keep blending, keep blending. But yeah, like to Berta's point, I think that it lasts all day on the mm -hmm. skin. It, um, it wears off pretty evenly. The color selection is beautiful. The only reason this isn't higher for me is because the other two formulas are just thinner. I mean, one of them is pretty thick, but I just like them more. Like this one, I feel like it can be a bit finicky because it's so thick and a little hard to blend. Um, and then I actually feel like it has like quite a sheen. And my top two it have does. a little bit less of a sheen. But it's still like like how you were talking about how you had like endless time to blend the merit. Like yeah. that is the most blendable. Yeah. This one you don't have that. Like it still no, stays you in place. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I like it. Like you blend it out. It's stays in place and it does have a yeah. slight sheen to it, but the pigment really holds. And I think that's just really important to me. Like I just do not like when I apply a blush and then two hours later I'm like, what happened to my blush? Yeah, yeah, no, this one has a great lasting power and it's the one that mm -hmm. got us into cream blush. Like I yeah. loved all the colors, I still do. And I'm just like, oh, I'm definitely gonna get one of those because they just perform well and you kind of like can't go wrong. Yeah, so I wear these the most. I know they're a multi-stick, I don't wear them anywhere else. I also love the component, I think it's so cute. I Even know. though we it's said so we didn't cute. like sticks, I think, well the top of the stick is actually not too bad that I, like yeah, exactly. big enough too. that I could like go in with my brush. Yeah. Um, but it is a really cute component. I love them. I think it's worth the money. I know people say they're like very expensive, but my it, number one is expensive. It'll last you too for a while. Number two, which like for the price, honest to God, to me is like shocking because I think this formula is so good, are the Tower 28 blushes. You can tell that these are well, well loved. I mean, I've worn these more than any of the other ones I'm going to talk about because my number one I got after these. But I have two shades. I have the shade Golden Hour, which is actually my favorite, and it's the first shade I purchased. It's like a bright orange. Um, if you are scared of oh, orange. Oh, that is orange. Oh, yeah, it's really orange, but it looks so stunning on the cheeks. Like, every time I no, wear I like this. like orange, yeah. Yeah, every time I wear this, I, like, look at my cheeks, and I'm like, oh, my God, they look so bright and pretty. Um, this is Golden Hour. I love it. And I really want the shade Power Hour of, of the new shades. I think it looks really beautiful. And this is Magic Hour, which is definitely the most wearable and the one that I've seen the most people talk about because it's basically just, like, a peachy pink. Um, and so this is really lovely as well. It looks more beige in the pan, like once again, <laughs> than on my really, skin really. because it, it turns a little more pink on me. Yeah. Um, but it's still really stunning. And these, I feel like what I love about them, well, number one, they're only $20. And I feel like, like I said, I wear them both so often. I even mix them in a get ready with us that I did. Um, I wear them so often and I haven't hit pan. So I feel like you get a decent amount. And What's the fill weight? It is 
4.5 grams. Okay, so same as Ilya. Oh, yeah. Then um, then it's a really good deal for $20. And like I said, I love that it's in, well, it's not even in a pan. The Tower 28 stuff doesn't have pans, so it's like really recyclable and yeah. sustainable, which is great. But it's like the perfect size to dip my brush in. Like, I love this pan size. It is my ideal. Um, and this formula, it's just like, it's so hard to describe because it's like, it is on the thicker side, but when you blend it in, like it blends, so I would call this creamy. It's creamy and it's really blendable. It has, even though it's like thicker, kind of like the Ilia, it's way more blendable in my opinion. And it like, it just like you can easily blend it and you can easily sheer out or you can easily yeah, build it, it up. Yeah, it looks slightly less viscous and more blendable than the e.l.f. Yeah, like, oh, definitely, definitely. I feel like with the Ilia, it's like, like Brota kind of said, once you like set it down, it's kind of like where it is and it lasts all day. With these, like you do have a little more playtime, even though it starts off thicker. Um, and you can kind of like customize them to be what you want because these do like this orange one, it looks really scary in the pan, but then you can blend it out to this like beautiful like sheerness. But then if you want it to be pigmented, you can easily build it up. Whereas like I feel like the Ilya, sometimes when you start to like add extra layers, it can kind of get like a little patchy when you're kind of building that color. And these ones don't do that. Um, and they are really emollient. Like again, you can see in the pan, like they're very emollient. But when they go on the cheeks and like set down, especially over like um, foundation or like if I have like uh, a powder bronzer underneath, I feel like, yeah, there's a little bit of a sheen, but on the face, it just to me looks really skin-like, which like I said, is my ideal finish. Like a skin-like satin matte finish is my ideal for a blush. My number one is more matte than this one. Um, so I do wish this was like slightly less dewier, but overall it just looks like skin to me, which I love. And even though these are, like I said, a little more on the thicker side and not as thin as I would like, because they're so blendable and they're so customizable and they just feel so nice on the skin, like they feel very weightless, it is forgivable to me. And I love this formula and I would say out of all of them, because my number one is a little expensive, this is the one I recommend the most, especially because they have a lot of shades um, like for all skin tones now, like they have ones that would really work for deeper skin and um, like this one works for lighter skin, which I feel like a lot of these actually are a little dark for someone who's like really fair. So yeah, I do wish more blushes came in that type of component. Yeah, it's like the best, like that's why I think these are my most used because they're just in my everyday makeup drawer and I'll just be like, oh, Tower 28, like that's so easy to throw on today and I'll just like go in and it's so easy. And I could talk about these for hours. <laughs> I really love them. So highly recommend these. And then my number one, which is like so expensive for what it is. I'm going to try to get it out of here. Well, maybe I can't. Um, it's the Kayer, um, Devin, Dev's Day told me how to say this, Kayer Weiss, I think I'm saying Weiss correctly, um, cream blushes. Okay, I can't get it out of this palette, so it's just going to be in here. It's this right here. I did a whole video on this, so I won't go on too long, but this formula is so... Because shade is really pretty. Oh yeah, this is Desire Glow, and it's the one I wanted so long, and... Can I swatch it? Yeah, again, like, it looks more warm on me than it does in the pan, but I love it so much, and... Um, I really want to get the shade Abundance because it's like a cool toned mauve and I feel like kind of like this one. Um, I mean, it's so unique. That's one that Devin told me that um, she thought was the most unique shade. So like the one she would get if she were me. And I went with Desire Glow because it's the one I wanted the longest. But I definitely want to pick up Abundance because it looks so unique. But this is what it looks like on the hand. And this formula is just so unique and I think that's why it's my number one. It's so thin. And it's so easy to blend and it actually starts out really sheer. You have to like build this up mm -hmm. um, and it has like a little bit of like a sheen to it, but I think that's coming from pearl. Like it's not like the actual base is really dewy. There's just pearl in it. That's making it glowy. And the shade I almost think you can feel the pearl, right? Yeah. This shade is called desired glow. So some of them I don't think have pearl, but this one does. Um, and on my hand, it probably looks so non impressive, but it's on my cheeks right now. And I just feel like, it's the most skin-like out of all of them, like the most natural. Like I honestly think if you didn't have any makeup on and just threw this on like over sunscreen, people oh, would yeah. think it was like your natural like cheek Blush. color. Yeah, because it blends in and looks, like I said, such a skin-like finish out of all of these. And it actually has for a cream that's in a pan, it has sort of this like moussey texture that just makes it so easy to blend and layer and I, it's just so unique. Like, I just can never get over it because I'm like, how did they do this formula? Like, I feel like nothing touches this. 
and I just love how it looks. I love how it blends. Um, again, the colors are so unique. They're so unique they might not be approachable, honestly, but that's really what drew me to them because I'm, like Britta said, like, we're sick of, like, everything being, like, this, like, baby pink. <laughs> Like, I don't, get, I don't get why so many brands launch, like, so many pinks in their cream blush line. But anyways, the colors um, that they throw out there are also unique. They're also beautiful. Um, and even though these are expensive, it's over $30. I can't think right now for just this pan. Like, not even the case that you can buy Holy moly. separately. So, it's really expensive. But, um, but how much is the fill weight? Like, similar to the Tower 28? Yeah, I'll leave it down below because I don't know off the top of my head. I actually feel like I'm going to go through this pretty quick as well. But that should just speak to how much I like this formula because, you know, I'm pretty frugal and I really just think this is worth the money because the unique formula, the unique shades, it looks skin-like, it blends beautifully, you can't really go wrong, it starts sheer, you can build it up, you can add more, it's just perfect. I love this so much. Um, it's my favorite cream blush, but I want a cool tone shade, so I think I'm going to get Abundance, but if you guys love these blushes and you have a cool tone in the range that you like more than that, please let me know because I'd love to hear it. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we know that we're obviously missing like a lot of cream blushes. Yeah, that's true. We've tried some that we didn't like, so we didn't include this them in the video, um, but we know that there's so many new ones. Like I saw Christian Dominique release some mm -hmm. pan cream blushes. The Liss Beauty ones. The Liss Beauty see, ones I'm we have to pick up try, those, but, but they, they always sold out. They're yeah, sold out. well they're in stock right now, but they just always, I'm just nervous I'm gonna get them and they're gonna turn pink on my skin. Yeah, I wanna try this.